Hello, and welcome to this demonstration entitled Using Exadata Smart Scan. My name is Peter Fusek, and I will be your tour guide for this demonstration. In the first part of this demonstration, we'll examine various Exadata Smart Scan statistics and measures that can be observed within Oracle Database. We'll start off by connecting to the database and we'll set the environment up so that we can see the execution plan for our SQL statement and we can see timing information. Now we'll execute a query that'll use Smart Scan. So here you can see the results for the query. Note the elapsed time was a little over six seconds. Smart Scan is indicated for this query by the table access storage full operation. You can also see that the WHERE clause predicate, cust valid equals A, can be evaluated by Exadata. Next we'll examine some statistics associated with the current session. Because the earlier query on the customers table was the only query that conducted real I.O. during this session, we can safely assume that the statistics relate to that query. The statistics show that approximately 288 megabytes of I.O. was performed to scan the customers table, and that all the I.O. was eligible for Smart Scan. The statistics further show that SmartScan returned less than 2 megabytes of data back to the database server. Or in other words, SmartScan reduced the amount of I.O. transported to the database server by more than 99% compared with what would have been required using non-Exadata storage. Next, we'll examine the cell wait events associated with the current session. Note that there's only one cell wait event listed. That's cell smart table scan. Note also that the amount of time associated with that wait event accounts for nearly all of the execution time for the query that we ran earlier. This is quite normal for a query that uses smart scan. So examining the statistics and wait events associated with the query we ran earlier indicates that the query did make efficient use of Exadata smart scan just as the query execution plan suggested. In the next part of this demonstration, we'll consider a scenario where the query execution plan indicates the use of Smart Scan, but the statistics and wait events suggest something more. In the second terminal window, we'll establish another SQL Plus session. And in the second session, we'll execute an update statement which updates almost half of the records in the customers table. Now the update is completed, but we'll leave the transaction in this second terminal window uncommitted for now. Back in the first terminal session, we'll reconnect to the database to establish a fresh database session as the SH user. Next, we'll re-execute the SQL query from before. This time, when the query executes, you'll notice that the query execution plan indicates the use of Smart Scan. Notice also that the execution time has increased substantially compared with before. The execution time's gone from roughly 6 seconds to over 27 seconds. Let's take another look at the statistics and wait events to see what's happening. Looking at these statistics, we see that this time the same amount of I.O. was eligible for Smart Scan. However, substantially more data was returned by Smart Scan. That number's gone from less than 2 megabytes to over 116 megabytes. And likewise, the amount of data transported across the interconnect has gone from less than 2 megabytes to more than 145 megabytes. When we take a look at the wait events, we again see a very different picture compared with last time. This time, a significant amount of time is associated with the cell single block physical read wait event. This is because the uncommitted update transaction has forced a substantial number of reads to be transferred to the traditional buffer cache read consistency path. Notice also where most of the time is being spent. 
This time, 21.6 seconds is associated with the cell single block physical read wait event. That's the majority of the little more than 27 seconds that the entire query took to execute. So clearly the efficiency and performance of SmartScan was compromised by the pending transaction. In the second part of this demonstration, we'll look at a couple of different ways that you can monitor the cell wait events when parallel query is used. So once again, we'll log in via SQL Plus and set up our session. And this time, we'll configure it so that parallel query is forced. Then we'll re-execute the same SQL query that we've been using throughout the demonstration. This time, the query execution plan shows the use of parallel query, and it also shows the use of SmartScan. Looking at the statistics, we see essentially the same numbers that we saw right at the beginning of the demonstration when SmartScan was working efficiently. When we look at the wait events, we see there are none associated with the current session. So what happened? Well, because parallel query was used, the query IO was performed by parallel execution servers. The associated wait events are then connected with those parallel servers, not the current session. Note that this behavior is symptomatic of parallel query and is not Exadata specific. So when parallel query is used, the wait events must be observed differently. One way to examine the wait events is to use a different set of statistics. This query shows the cell wait events across the entire database instance. So if you execute this query, look at the wait events, then execute whatever operation you're interested in monitoring, re-execute the instance level cell wait events query, and then compare the before statistics with the after statistics in order to isolate the weights for the operation in between. Using system level wait event statistics is a simple way to monitor parallel query wait events as long as you're the only user on the system and you do not want to monitor concurrent operations. Often, this is not the case. So in the final part of this demonstration, we'll look at another method using trace files, which can be used to isolate the wait events associated with a specific parallel query operation, regardless of concurrency. While I've been talking, we've executed a query to determine the default trace file for the current session. We need to take note of this because the directory path leading up to the trace file will also be the default location for other trace files. Next, we can use the DBMS session dot set identifier procedure to set a client identifier, in this case PQ1, for the current session. The client identifier will help to locate trace information associated with the current session and any parallel query servers that perform work on behalf of the current session. Finally, we can use the DBMS monitor dot client ID trace enable procedure to start recording trace information for the PQ1 client identifier. Notice that weights equal true is specified to ensure that weight information is recorded in the trace files. After tracing is enabled, you can execute whatever operations you wish to monitor. In this case, we'll just re-execute the same query as before. When you're finished, you can stop the trace by executing dbmsmonitor.clientid trace disable. Now to see the weight events, it's a relatively simple matter of finding the appropriate trace file. Firstly, we need to change into the directory where the trace files are located. Then we can use the grep command to find trace files that contain the client identifier, PQ1, that we set up earlier during the database session. In this case, you can see that three trace files have been discovered. The first one on the list is associated with our SQL Plus session, while the last two 
are associated with parallel query slaves that performed work in our behalf. Finally, when we examine one of the parallel query server trace files, we can see that it contains the cell smart table scan wait events that are associated with our parallel query. That concludes the demonstration. Thanks for watching.